And now the world is watching as Israeli officials consider how to respond to Iran's first ever direct attack on the country. Iran already saying that if Israel strikes back, they will retaliate with even greater force. We have live team coverage on the Middle East tensions. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Ben Kennedy is standing by with reaction from the White House. But first, the Local 10's Glenna Milberg is in the newsroom with the latest from the ground. Glenna. Calvin Nicole, in the last few hours, Israel's Defense Force Chief of Staff made it clear he said Iran's attack will be met with a response. Right now, not at all clear what is the response and when it will come. The photos from inside Israel's war cabinet meeting hardly convey the depth of the dilemma. Determined to act to respond, but when and how? The Biden administration insists it has no role in that decision. We have been coordinating a diplomatic response to seek to prevent escalation. Uh, strength and wisdom need to be same, the same sides, the different sides of the same coin. Secretary of State Blinken spent the weekend on that diplomacy with an eye toward the fragile alliances among Israel and some of its Arab neighbors. <laughs> like Jordan and the Saudis, who assisted Israel by opening their airspace to the aerial defense against the barrage of bombs. 170 drones and more than 120 ballistic missiles, a senior Israeli official telling ABC five, more or less, managed to penetrate. There was virtually no infrastructure damage to Israel. But their attack requires an unequivocal condemnation from the international community. Before yesterday, it was presumed that 100 ballistic missiles might overwhelm even the best defensive systems. That was Iran's intent, and as you all saw for yourself, it didn't work. The Biden administration telegraphing the outcome as a strategic win for Israel, hoping that the war cabinet will take that as an opportunity and decide against a strike back and possible escalation of attacks. In a meeting of the G7, the U.S.'s closest allies, the president made clear the U.S. will not participate in any offensive against Iran. Nicole? Glenna, thank you. Our team coverage heads to Washington. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Ben Kennedy is live with a response from President Biden. Ben. Well, Nicole, the White House did make clear they stand with Israel. And as Glenna was talking about, also said that if it comes to a counterattack by Israel against Iran, they would not support that. Welcome. Welcome to the White House. President Joe Biden with his counterpart from Iraq in the Oval Office Monday amid rising tension in the Middle East as the commander in chief denounced Iran's unprecedented assault on Israel. Strongly condemn Iran's brazen and unprecedented attack. An attack that included more than 100 ballistic missiles along with swarms of drones. <laughs> It marked the first direct military assault on Israel and a larger strike than expected. So let's be straight. Given the scale of this attack, Iran's intent was clearly to cause significant destruction and casualties. The White House reports 99 percent of Iran's barrage was stopped, intercepted by Israel, the U.S. and its allies. President Biden instructed the United States to defend Israel to the maximum extent possible and defeat that attack. And we did. Biden met with his national security team, reaffirming the U.S.'s ironclad support for Israel. It comes as he also convened world leaders of the G7 in an effort to prevent a wider escalation of the war. Now, the White House is calling on Congress to pass new aid for Israel. It would include money for their defense system, the David Sling and Iron Dome, as they wait for them to make some sort of a move on Capitol Hill. Reporting live in Washington, D.C., Ben Kennedy, Local 10 News.